Welcome to this short video on rapid innovation for local government. This is part of the LGA's COVID-19 political leadership webinars for councillors. My name is Manny Gatt and I will take you through approximately a 15 minute tutorial about rapid innovation. And this will be followed by a series of webinars where you can dial in, speak with other councillors uh, around the, the subject of rapid innovation, share your learning and insights accompanied by, by myself and other political leaders from the LGA network. So let us begin. Let's start with the concept of uh, necessity is the mother of invention. This is a quote attributed to Plato, but in fact it predates even, that, uh, even him. And it is at the heart of what we wanted to kind of cover in this short uh, video tutorial. Um, the reality is that when a, a crisis like COVID-19 happens, rapid innovation happens too. The size of the challenge uh, means that the, re, the, the necessity of the response is even greater. And these are opportunities to rapidly change and respond to those challenges. So the key messages I'm going to get across in the short webinar are firstly, never waste the crisis use this challenge, this real difficulty, to make the changes that are gonna help people through it. Secondly, it is recognized that there will be a new normal. Um, we're gonna to have to live and work differently. And this requires us as councils and us as leaders to work and support that transition to that new normal. And that then requires us to lead by example. And you have a particular role in making that happen. I also want to touch on change within councils and the use of scrutiny as a driver for improvement. But the key messages within this short webinar are, are twofold. First of all, do you have clear, innovative processes that manage change within your council? And do you, have you identified those people that are going to help innovation to happen within your council? And do you nurture them? And I shall conclude on the point that actually Change is chaotic, it is difficult, difficult, it is challenging, it is messy. You're going to have to embrace that process. I also want to guide you to the, the amount of LGA resources available to you to support you when you go through that process of rapid innovation uh, in the context of this pandemic. And there are resources around the pandemic itself in the centre of that slide. But there's also a huge amount of resources developed by the LGA around transformation and innovation uh, with self-assessment tools. And of course, all the work the LGA has put together around productivity for councils. These are important and useful sites for, uh, for you to dial into and support you on your challenging journey ahead. So what do I mean by never waste a crisis? Well, there was a quote recently by Chris Nader at Barking Dagenham um, um, Council, who's subsequently been seconded to um, Birmingham City Council in the local government chronicle um, last month. And he talked about a, a culture change which would have taken about 18 months to run through, being nailed um, in, in 18 hours. And that's all around re remote working. And that really illustrates the point I want to make that rapid innovation happens when the crisis, the necessity of the crisis is so large. And it's not just happening in local government. Will Wart, uh, Warburg, Warburton's apologies, um, talked about um, the fact that when the crisis is so large, you're gonna to have to act your way through um, the new way of thinking rather than just think your way through the new way of acting. And in his uh, analysis of this, looking at it from a health perspective, he noted that it took it was up to 10 years for a Skype-based consultation uh, for, for, um, between GPs and patients around diabetes um, to, to land. Yet, in 10 weeks, we've got virtually all of the GP um, um, practices across the country using um, uh, remote uh, consultations via the pandemic. So, 10 years to 10 weeks. Again, Rapid innovation happens when the task that we need to address requires rapid innovation. 
And it does require us as civic leaders to step up uh, and be part of that civic and political change. And this is a quote from John Fuller after meeting the Prime Minister, uh, recognising the role that you have in local government to lead the change around your places. And I know that all of you have been working very hard to do just that. Um, you have a particular role when leading innovation and change. And I want to just to capture some of the key components that effectively the three C's of change management. You have a particular role in communicating both the what and the why of it, why we need to change. You're uniquely placed to bring people together. Um, you, you lead beyond your own organizations. You lead beyond the councils. You have a democratic responsibility for place. So therefore, you can break down the barriers of those unhealthy um, competition between some of the stakeholders that you may find within your locality. And you must commit to the change, not just by how you exhibit and behave yourself, but crucially by giving air cover to others and creating a safe space to enable those innovations to happen. You also have to keep an eye on two things. First of all, keep an eye on the prize. What's the change you're trying to address? And secondly, you need to keep an eye on not underestimating the level of resistance there is to change. And this slide tries to illustrate both aspects. Firstly, keeping your eye on the prize. And this is a list of challenges uh, identified by local government in response to COVID-19. And certainly the most important challenge that you identified as a group was social isolation of the vulnerable. So if that's the area that you want the innovation to happen, don't lose sight of that as the goal. Within your councils, you have a particular role in making sure that the infrastructure of your councils is capable of rapid innovation. And uh, work done by Solis looking at the kind of building blocks for improvement and change, identified where the leadership focus should be. And they are the ones that I've identified in the kind of orange color. And I want to particularly draw your attention to one of those bubbles, which uh, asks the question, do you have a strategic approach to innovation? And this is a really, really important question that you should be posing in your cabinets and on your scrutiny panels. Do you have a strategic approach to, uh, to innovation? And I'd like to explore what that may mean for you. When you look at the scrutiny of change, um, there are a number of aspects that uh, governance and change need to address. And I'll repeat again, there is this point around your role as a, an effective communicator of change. You've got to get the governance structures right. You've got to tackle the cultural issues around your partnerships. And you, um, you've got to engage the end users, the people that you want to support as part of the process. And as I emphasized, you've got to have a clear innovation and change process. And I would direct you to two places to explore the scrutiny aspects. The first one is that the LG has some really good um, leadership um, programs around scrutiny and there's a link there on that slide that will take you to where you can see about those programs. And also the, the Centre for Public Scrutiny has a whole series of good practice guides and so forth around how scrutiny can be used for improvement and rapid innovation in the context of COVID. So by posing the question, do you have an innovation process? I want to unpack the difference between task and finish groups and a more integrated approach to innovation that incorporates um, uh, innovation as an integral part. So when we look at task and finish groups, and this would be something you'd be very familiar with, task and finish groups are really good when you do know exactly what the task is, and you do know what the outcome is, what needs to be implemented, and you bring people together with a specific task of finishing that job. Their job is to implement something. So task and finish works best when you need to implement something that you know what it is and you know that it's deliverable. However, task and finish stumbles a little bit as a process when innovation and change needs to be part 
of that process, when you ask people to come together to generate solutions rather than simply implement them. So I'm going to bring your attention to a slightly different process that you may want to consider discussing in your cabinets around how you might adopt rapid innovation in your councils. And this approach we call collaborative incubator model. It was developed by the Collaborative Leader, Leaders, Leaders Network based in Hawaii, believe it or not. But they break the whole process of change down into three component parts. The first part is the part where you as leaders, as political leaders, come together and determine what the, what the challenge is. It could be uh, supporting vulnerable pe people uh, um, uh, with issues around isolation, as I mentioned before. So you conceptualize the challenge, you align the partners, and you organize and mobilize teams. And the team you mobilize, uh, is what we call an incubation team or an innovation team. And what's different about them, and that's the second phase, is that their job isn't to implement anything. Their job simply is to come up with the radical solutions that will address the problem that you have. And they work together as a team, a diverse team, and you may bring people from outside the council, you may bring users or residents in that, and stakeholders, partners, and they work together to, to come up with the solutions. And then they pitch them back to you, the political leaders in the initiate phase, who then make the decision whether they want to proceed on that uh, implementation. And if they do, if you like the ideas that they have, then you commission a task and finish group to implement it, and that then moves it into its third phase. And that implementation group may be made up of different people that participated in the incubate, the innovation phase. The separation of innovation and implementation allows the innovation to flourish, and I urge you to consider that as a construct. Nesta has created a compendium of innovation methods, and one of them is called the 100-day challenge, which mirrors that model of initiate, they call it design, the 100-day challenge, that's the innovate, and then the third phase, which we call implementation, they call sustaining. sustaining. But in essence, it's the same structure. You separate out the innovation element from the implementation element, and that enables the innovation to flourish. But to do that, you've got to have innovative people that can work and facilitate groups that you bring together in that incubate or that innovation space. And research done by The Economist uh, uh, magazine back in 2008 noted that very few companies have built high levels of trust, even within their own organizations, or invested in creating the trusted individuals who can, as the research shows, be powerful agents of collaboration. So one of the things you may ask as a political leader within your council is, who are the trusted individuals within our council that we can field in that incubate space? And are we investing in their skills to be successful at facilitating change? And finally, I just want to just dial into the reality of all of this. Change is often complex and messy, and you know that from your own experience. And it will require you to cross organizational boundaries. Change happens often when you bring different organizations together. So it requires you to support the building of relationships and working with different people from different organizations. And as a consequence, when people do come together, they're going to have to alter their behaviors, their attitudes and expectations, because they're going to have to lead beyond their own organizational boundaries. And crucially, you're going to have to collaborate with the public and the end users. And that requires a different way of engaging with our communities. And finally, we can't command control these things. We're going to have to influence, nurture and shape. And by embracing that chaos, you will enable rapid innovation to uh, emerge. So let me summarize this short video presentation by repeating the key messages. The first one is never waste a crisis. COVID-19, the challenge that it represents is of such a magnitude that we do need to respond rapidly with new innovations. And hopefully in this short presentation, I've illustrated how councils and the health sector have already responded to that. The reality is 
that these challenges that we face around COVID-19 will create a new normal, uh, a new a new type of council will emerge and us as civic leaders need to respond and help people shift to that new way of living and working. So we're gonna to have to lead by example and we have a particular role in making change happen across our communities. I alluded to the point that actually as political leaders, you have a, you have a specific role in looking at how scrutiny for improvement can be used to enable rapid innovation. And I've alluded to a number of examples of how you may want to explore how best to do that within your council. But at the heart of this presentation are two points. The first one is, do you have good, clear innovation processes within your council? And if you don't have them, how do you create them? And I've given you some illustrations of how you can move and build on task and finish into models like collaborative uh, incubator or the 100 day challenge to build innovation as an integral part of the way that you manage change within your council. And secondly, change happens through people. Who are those trusted individuals within your council that can facilitate the bringing together of people to make uh, those uh, innovations uh, to, uh, to happen? And how do you nurture them? So. We would urge you to concentrate your time and effort on developing your collaborative processes and nurturing those people within your council that can facilitate people to come together to innovate. And finally, I just wanted to land the point, the point that innovation is a bit chaotic and you're gonna to have to embrace the chaos of this. It isn't a linear approach, it will be messy. So understanding all of that will help you support the processes within your council to rep for rapid innovation and change. And if I may just dial you back into the, uh, the, the wonderful resources that the LGA have around supporting you around COVID-19, around transformation and innovation, and also around productivity. And they, uh, I do commend those resources to you and I do recommend that you dial into those and have an ex exploration. And beyond that, there's a whole range of other elements of good advice from Solis, from Nesta, from my company, Shared Service Architecture, and also from the public, uh, from the Centre for um, Public Scrutiny. And I've provided you links there that you can dial into some of that wider material. So in conclusion, I hope you found this, um, uh, this short webinar helpful and and. I do urge you to dial back into the live webinars that we should be uh, hosting um, so you can have a conversation with us and colleagues and, uh, to explore how you may take innovation forward within your councils. And finally, at the end of this, uh, this presentation, there is a short questionnaire that will ask some questions around, um, uh, would you like to share some best practice or insights or asking you uh, to, explore, um, to identify any other areas around innovation, collaboration and change that you'd like the LGA to develop webinars like this on. I thank you for your time and look forward to speaking to you when you participate in our online webinars.